Okay. Thank you for all, all of you for coming um, to this 2018 Bullet Lecture in Astronomy. Um, the Bullet Lecture is named in honor of William Marshall Bullet, who is the Solicitor General of the United States under William Howard Taft, uh, but also a very prominent lawyer who had offices in Louisville, Washington, D.C., and New York City. Um, now, William Marshall Bullitt had interests beyond the law. He was passionate about astronomy and mathematics. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was so passionate about mathematics that he would re require that lawyers who wanted to come work for him pass a mathematics exam. <laughs> Okay, because he thought that that showed that they had the brains to um, work as a lawyer. Um, William Marshall Bullitt collected books, specifically he collected books in mathematics and astronomy. He collected first editions of books like the Principia, Newton's book on physics. Um, he collected the Dialogo, the book that Galileo wrote to set forth his argument for the um, heliocentric model. And he collected, and I cannot pronounce it because my um, Latin is very poor, um, but it's the revolutions of the celestial spheres is the American translation, which is the first book by Copernicus. He collected all of these. And upon his death, all of these books and more, a total of 173 texts of um, just the history of mathematics and astronomy were donated to the University of Louisville. What I find most amazing is, is I looked it up and the total value assigned to these first editions of these books from the 1500s, 1500s, 1600s, and 1700s was um, given as $58,000. Okay? Um, the Newton's Principia, the copy we have here in our library, is priceless. It has Newton's own handwriting in it. Okay? It is one of two books that has Newton's handwriting in it, and it is here available in the library on campus. It's available on display. You cannot touch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have touched it. I feel very lucky. So, um, in honor of William Marshall Bullitt, who I have to mention, in case you're wondering, Bullitt County is not named after him. It's named after his great-grandfather, who was the first lieutenant governor of Kentucky and actually one of the original donors to the University of Louisville. Um, and that brings me to tonight's point. Um, the Bullitt family has been uh, very generous to the <coughs> University of Louisville. And right now, we're going to bring up Mr. Lowry Watkins, Jr. This is William Marshall Bullitt's grandson. And he is going to present two awards, one to uh, a scholarship in astronomy, and the other is for the best paper in astronomy. So I want to bring up Mr. Lowry Watkins, Jr. Thank you. Um, my grandfather passed away 61 years ago yesterday, and Sputnik was launched 61 years ago today, and he was very interested in astronomy. Unfortunately, he missed Sputnik by one day. 
But I remember watching it going over at night, and uh, it was a big shock to the United States, and uh, so that helped start our space program, kicked it in the high year. His widow donated the books the year after he died to U of L, Nora Bullen. Um, and uh, so that, that's how they got here. He had a rare book dealer in New York and in uh, London, and I think in Germany, watching out for these first editions for him. And uh, he collected them over 40, 50 years, uh, this valuable collection. Okay, um, so the William Marshall Bullitt Award in Astronomy and Astrophysics is given to Samir Kuzmik this year. Okay, this is for his uh, academic achievement. And Samir, stand up here. Um, we're also going to present the Willing Marshall Bullet Memorial Award for Best Paper in Astronomy and Astrophysics to Samir uh, for his paper, uh, Morphological Properties of Redshift 8 Galaxies. So tonight's speaker is Rocky Kolb from the University of Chicago, who's going to talk on the mysteries of the dark universe. Um, I've known Rocky for more years than either one of us would care to uh, admit to. Um, he uh, has been the director of particle astrophysics at the Fermilab National Laboratory. Uh, he has been the chair of the Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Chicago, and he recently was the Dean of Physical Sciences at the University of Chicago. And so right now I'd like to have you all welcome Rocky Kolb. Thank you very much, Jim. And, uh Thanks everyone for coming out this evening, and I appreciate this opportunity to present the Bullet Lecture. It's been a remarkable uh, series of lectures uh, by uh, many of my colleagues, and I'm just proud to be part of it. So what Jim didn't uh, tell you is that I am a cosmologist. Uh, it, not a cosmetologist, but a <laughs> cosmologist. Uh, one studies the universe of makeup and the other the makeup of the universe. <laughs> so I study the makeup of the universe and cosmology is the study of the origin, composition, the large scale structure, and the evolution of the universe. And when I say evolution, it includes the evolution of matter, how matter forms stars, galaxies, planets, people, the radiation in the universe, and starting in the 20th century, it also studies the role of space and time in cosmology. Now, our conception of space and time underwent a tremendous revolution at the start of the 20th century, about 100 years ago. Classically, as we go about our everyday life, our view of space and time is the Newtonian classical view of space and time. In the Principia, uh, Newton wrote about absolute space and absolute true and mathematical time. He wrote that absolute space remains similar and immovable an absolute true and mathematical time flows without regard to anything external. To Newton, in, a, in, in our everyday life, space is fixed. There's nothing we do that changes space. Something might be 10 meters apart, and you know, it's 10 yards to make a first down, and there's nothing you can do to change that. 
and time. You know, you can look on your cell phone and see what time it is. There's nothing you can do to change the time that it's, that it's fixed. Our conception of space and time changed due to the work of Albert Einstein. And in 1905, Einstein developed the special theory of relativity where he showed that space and time are not independent, but they're relatives, they're related to each other. And people's conception of time intervals and simultaneity depends upon velocities, space and time are relatives. He didn't stop there. 10 years later, he developed a theory of general relativity, which is his theory of gravity, and it's based upon the idea that gravity is caused by the curvature of space, that massive objects curve and warp and affect space. Space is not a passive, uh, a passive player in the game of physics. It can be changed. So after Einstein's great discoveries in 19...